Amen. Amen. I want to thank everyone who participated in that. Amen. Praise the Lord. I am aware of the time. And it means absolutely nothing to me. <laughs> so I know that we have been sitting and enjoying beautiful music and scripture reading. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to invite you to stand with me to get a little blood circulation as we have a prayer before we begin with the message. Father in heaven, Lord, I thank you very much for the most in the biggest thing that you could have done and that is give your son to the world, to us. And Lord, I just ask that he come into our hearts not just in this time of year but every day of the year. Thank you, O oh Lord, for the great love that you have for us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Okay, you may be seated. And we are finishing the three angels' messages. A brief, a brief study on the three angels' messages. And today we're going to wrap up with the third angels. There, if you open your Bibles to Revelation chapter 14, as our scripture was. Revelation 14, 9 through 12. Revelation 14, 9 through 12. Then a third angel followed then, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worship the beast and his image and receive his mark on his forehead or on his hand, he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment shall ascend forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night who worship the beast and his image, and whoever receives the mark of his name. But here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ. Friends, this, I believe, the most sincere warning in Scripture. God is being as clear as possible as clear as possible. You either worship the Creator who made the heaven and the earth or you worship the beast and his image. And God gives us a choice. He wants us to worship Him, but if you choose not to, He's letting us know in advance what will happen. He's letting us know in advance what will happen. And there's a concern today in my heart with Sabbath keepers and the third angel's message. And I believe that this message is a brief, simple message, and I hope that we can also apply it as well. I do believe you will be able to understand it. And my concern is that as Sabbath keepers, I feel that there will be some who will drink of the wine of the wrath of God poured out in full. Because the third angel's message pronounces destruction on a specific group. Did, did you catch who that group is? On those who have the mark of the beast and worship his image and receive his mark on his forehead or on his hand. If you notice there, salvation, the third angel's message, it all boils down to worship. Even beginning with Revelation chapter 13, beginning with who will you worship? What will you worship? You either worship God or you worship man. Salvation boils down to worship. And we as Adventists, as Sabbath keepers, like to focus much on Sabbath keeping as the main test. Is that not true? Right? Sabbath as a main test in the last final days. That is true, but there is more. There is more. There in Revelation 14, verse 12. Let's read that and read it slowly. Here, comparing to those who receive 
the mark and the image of the beast. Here, over here, is the patience of the saints. And here are those who what? Keep the commandments of God. Notice, is the Bible does not separate the day of worship from the commandments of God. Notice the third angel's message did not say here is the patience of the saints and here are those that remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Or here are those that worship on the seventh day. It says here are those that keep the commandments of God. We really focus on Sabbath and, and focus on remembering to keep it holy as we are told to in Exodus 20. We also focus on observing it from sundown to sundown as it tells us in Leviticus 23, from restraining from our weekly jobs there also in Exodus 20, from, from preparing for it. We, we prepare for the Sabbath as Luke 23 tells us and also Exodus 16. And even not engaging in buying or selling as Nehemiah chapter 13 tells us. But frankly, any devoted Pharisee can do that. Any devoted Pharisee can keep a list of do's and don'ts. All these are important. They are very important. And because they are in Scripture, we should observe them. But Sabbath keeping is more than do's and don'ts. It has to... It has to do with something in your heart. It has to do with something in your heart. So if you join me in the book of James, James chapter 2, we are familiar with this scripture and sometimes we, talk, we throw this scripture to our Sunday keeping friends, but I think today it might get thrown back at us. James chapter 2 verse 10. The Bible says, For whoever shall keep the whole law and yet stumble in one point, he is guilty of how much? All. Of all the law, right? And we like to throw that to our friends, uh, to, to our other denomination of friends and say, you keep all nine, but if you miss the fours, you broke them all. But you know, the reverse can also be said. The reverse can also be said. To keep one, and break any of the other nine, it's like you didn't even keep that one you're claiming to keep. Am I making sense a little bit? Okay, here the, the, the scripture says, For whoever shall keep the whole law and yet stumble in one point is guilty of all. The reverse can also be said. If we claim we keep, well, we keep the Sabbath day, but we break any of the other nine, we're not even keeping the Sabbath day. We're breaking that commandment as well. You see, this is the problem for some Sabbath keepers and for some Adventists because they say, I believe in the Sabbath. I have observed it from sundown to sundown. Okay. But if you claim to keep the Sabbath but you break any of the other nine commandments, you just broke the Sabbath commandment as well. The Sabbath commandment as well. And this is, friends, is my concern for us as Sabbath keepers, as Adventists. We boast in keeping the right day, but God is not looking for a day keepers, but for commandment keepers. What does it say there in Revelation 14? The third angel's message. The third angel's message here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who remember the, the Sabbath day. No, it doesn't say that. Who keep the commandments of God. Who keep the commandments of God. It's not just remember the fourth day, I'm sorry, the fourth commandment, and forget the rest of the nine and think that we're going to be safe at the end time. God is doing a sealing on those who keep the commandments of God. In those commandments is the fourth commandment. Amen. But we do not disregard the other nine commandments. So we can, we, we can ask ourselves, do we have any other gods before us? That's part of the commandments, is it not? Are you sure that we don't have any other gods? Anything that we put before God is a god. Anything. 
It can be our family, it can be our job, it can be food, it can be the television, it can be Facebook, it can be, the, it can be anything we spend more time than on God is a God. Do we take God's name in vain? Do we honor our parents? You know, and sometimes I hear, well, my parents weren't the nice parents. Or my father was a drunkard. My father was a, an abusive father. That may be so, but the Christian person rises above that. The Christian person rises above all the evilness that may happen in the city, in the home. God says, honor your father and your mother so that, 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 so that, that the days that he has given you may be, may be long. Do we kill? Do we steal? Do we bear false witness? Do we participate in gossip? Do we covet? We, we may not covet our neighbor's things, but sometimes we may covet God's blessings on other people and, think, and may be thinking, God is blessing them so much. Why isn't he blessing me? And we covet the blessing of God for others. To really claim to be a Sabbath keeper, you must keep all of his commandments. As we saw there in James 2, if you break one, it's like you broke all. So we may keep the fourth, but if we don't honor our parents, or if we don't love one another, we're breaking all the commandments. To be mean to your spouse on Friday and show up to church on Saturday while the matter is still unresolved is vain worship. Is vain worship. You don't believe me? Look, 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 turn with me to Matthew chapter 5. This is how serious Jesus takes worship. This is why he is not interested in day keepers. He had plenty of day keepers that were called the Pharisees. They kept the day more strict even than we do. And yet they still missed it. Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, verse 22, the Bible says, But I say to you that whoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whoever says to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But whoever says, you fool, shall be in danger of, of, of hell fire. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar, and there remember... Now remember, where was the altar? It was in the sanctuary, right? Okay, so you come to the sanctuary and bring your sacrifice to the altar. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go your way. First, be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. This shows you how God feels about real worship. See, if you can't get along with someone at church, friends, just stay home. Don't come and pollute the rest of the pews with your bitterness that should have been resolved where Jesus says, hold on to your gift. First go resolve the issue with your brother and sister and then come. Because there is a danger in coming to church with bitterness to another person and polluting others with that bitterness and spreading it and well as well. We cannot expect to come to church and, and expect that God will do some miracle while we haven't resolved issues with somebody else. And expect that, that the Holy Spirit will be with us. Friends, the Holy Spirit throughout the week has been convicting us. If we have somebody, if, if we have something with someone. And every time we've said no, no, no to, to the Holy Spirit. Don't think he's going to come with you here just because we dress up nice and put on church clothes. A spirit-filled person will make things right with those whom they are not right with. Will at even attempt 
If the other person is not willing to listen or, or rejects, at least you've attempted to make things right, then you can come and worship. Then you can come and worship. You see, God is not interested in day keepers that we just put on the clothes, we come the day, clock in, and we think that we're going to get the seal that the angel is giving right now. He is not looking for day keepers, but for commandment keepers. And worship is more than just a day, it is an attitude. And yes, the Sabbath will be the test of worship in the last days, but you cannot worship God on the right day while breaking any of the other nine commandments and think that you will be saved. You can't. You can't, and I base that on Revelation 14, verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God. I can't get over that. It does not say, here are those who remember the Sabbath day. Here are those who honor. No, it says, here are those who keep the commandments. Worship is more than coming here and listening to a sermon. Worship is an attitude that says, God is all. God is all. You see, the priorities we set, the music we listen to, the movies we watch, the clothes we wear, the places we go, are all an expression of our worship to God. They're an expression of our attitude toward God. Did you know that? Let's take a similar um, application. Can it be true that the way a woman dresses or converses or her attitude or her habits are is an, is an expression of her relationship with her husband? Absolutely. If a married woman is a flirt or dresses provocatively, it gives an expression of a bad relationship with her husband. And vice versa as well. Vice versa. If the man is... is Being is behaving in a different way, maybe with other women, it is giving an expression that his relationship with his wife is not well and is looking for something else. And so it is in our relationship with God. Sometimes there is little worship brought to church on Sabbath because some people bring in an attitude of defiance against God which they express on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and they think that by putting on religious clothes on one day, God is going to just buy it. I'm sorry, but the Bible does not say that. Jesus tells us, you have an issue, go home and resolve it first, and then come and bring your offering. And then come and bring your offering. There in Revelation Revelation, Re Revelation 7, Revelation chapter 7, God is doing a, a work of sealing. He is sealing right now. After these things, verse 1, after these things I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, on the sea, or on any tree. Then I saw another, another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was granted to harm the earth and the sea, saying, Do not harm the earth, the sea, or the trees, till we have sealed the servants of God, where? On their foreheads. And if we turn to the book of Isaiah chapter 8, what is exactly that God seals on our forehead? Is it the Sabbath day? Isaiah chapter 8, verse 16. God is in the process of sealing his people right now. And my concern for us, for my people, for Sabbath keepers, is that we sometimes think that by keeping a day, we're in the gate. Isaiah chapter 8 verse 16 says bind up the testimony seal the law among my disciples no wonder that makes sense that's why Re revelation 14 verse 12 if god is sealing the law of his law in his disciples in his people that's why the third angel's message 
says, here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep my commandments because God has sealed his commandments in our foreheads. When the angel is flying, he is sealing the law, not just a day. In the law is a commandment of the day, but it's part of the entire law. You can't make it just on the fourth commandment. We need the first, the second, the third, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh. We need all of God's commandment. This is, this is why Jesus says in John 5, 14, 15, if you love me, keep my Sabbath, keep my commandments. If you love me, keep my commandments. Now, something, some, Sometimes what we don't like to hear is that proof of a relationship with God is obedience. Proof of our relationship with God is obedience. And sometimes as I scroll on the television and I, or, or on the radio and I listen to other preachers from other de de denominations, the modern Christian church really focuses only on, on loving the Lord. Love the Lord. Love the Lord. Just love, love, love. And sometimes I, I, I ask myself, there has to be one of those ministers that are married. There has to be one that's married. And every married person knows that love is more than just words. To love someone is more than just words. You have to love with your actions, not just with your words. Are there any married folks here that can say amen? Amen. 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 And all those who used to be married, amen as well. Any proof of our love to God has to include obedience as well. Has to include obedience. God is clear that proof that you love him is keeping his commandments. So when I come here on Sabbath, I bring with me an attitude. What attitude do I bring? An attitude of worship? I bring with me a relationship and that's why you can't disturb my worship because I bring a relationship that I have accumulated with God throughout the week. An, an attitude of worship that I have worshipped Him throughout the week. You, you see, because I am not coming to your house. I love to see all of your faces. I really do. And to fellowship and talk. But I mainly came to speak and pray and talk to God. This is his house. I came to God's house. And this is my concern, church, because many of us, or some of us, are focusing on just keeping the day, but never really having that relationship with God, that we fall in love with him and keep his commandments. There is a ceiling going on right now and there are people that are just keeping the day but the wrong attitude. They keep the day but they envy their brother or they keep the day but they may have other gods at home. They keep the day and maybe hate their brother. The angel is doing the ceiling right now and he is not looking for day keepers, but he is looking for commandment keepers. And here it is, just one more time. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God. The third angel's message not only has to deal with, are you worshiping on the right day? Are you a commandment keeper? If you're a commandment keeper, you're worshiping on the right day, period. Because it's part of the commandments. But we do not ignore the other nine commandments. And thinking that because we come on the seventh day, we are just fine. Here is the patience of the saints, those who keep the commandments of God. And a simple question that I should like to ask and appeal. Are you a day keeper or a commandment keeper? And I pray that you wrestle with God and ask God 
to reveal to you if you are just a day keeper or a commandment keeper. And if you are just a day keeper, that you just turn to the Lord, repent, and become a commandment keeper. We can do all things through Christ because He gives us the strength. That is a promise from His Word. A promise from His Word. And so my prayer and my appeal is to ask yourself if you are a day keeper or a commandment keeper. As the year, as the year is wrapping up and we're starting a new year, let's begin the new year being commandment keepers. Amen. Commandment keepers. Because the sealing that the angels are doing are on commandment keepers. Amen. Let's pray. Father in heaven, Lord, you are coming very soon. Praise the Lord. Thank you very much for the coming of your son as a baby. Well, he is no longer coming as a baby, but he is coming as King of kings and Lord of lords. And he is coming for his people that keep all of your commandments. And so, Lord, forgive us if we may focus on one commandment but ignore the rest. Help us, oh my God, to be commandment keepers and to love you with all our hearts and be ready for when you do come and for when the angel comes to us and looks at our lives and seals our foreheads with your law. Thank you, Father, for hearing our prayers. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.